Apple has added a new security feature with the iOS 18.1 update to ensure that iPhones automatically reboot after long idle periods in order to re-encrypt data, making it harder to extract. How does this new feature impact the methods that law enforcement use to access data on iPhones? There is a new phishing tool that enables the mass targeting of GitHub developers through personalized emails using platforms like SharePoint to cleverly bypass traditional email defenses. North Korean hackers have crafted Trojanized Flutter apps to infiltrate macOS security, temporarily bypassing Apple's robust defenses by using legitimate developer IDs. And finally, if you stick around to the end of the episode, we're gonna be going through what the FBI, NSA, and other cybersecurity firms have identified as the top 15 vulnerabilities that were consistently exploited by cyber criminals in 2023. You're listening to The Daily Decrypt. iOS 18.1 introduces a new security measure known as inactivity reboot that automatically causes iPhones to restart after extended idle periods to enhance data encryption. This new feature aims to elevate iPhone security by transitioning locked devices from an after first unlock state to a before first unlock state, thereby increasing resistance to forensic phone unlocking tools. Through this mechanism, the encryption keys are removed from memory upon reboot, preventing data access even to operating system level processes. This security enhancement specifically targets unauthorized data extraction by law enforcement or other malicious actors who could exploit stored decryption keys on an unlocked device. The reboot mechanism ensures that after an idle period, the decryption keys, which remain in memory for active sessions, are wiped out, significantly hindering unauthorized access attempts. And it's been recommended many times before that phone users and other devices should do frequent restarts it has a bunch of different effects from kicking out active malware actors who didn't build, you know, restart persistence. But I was actually unaware of the encryption keys rotating and staying in memory on iPhones. So though I don't plan to be imprisoned anytime soon, which is pretty much the only situation I can imagine where my phone will remain in a after first reboot state for an extended period of time, but it is good to know that my data will remain private if that situation does arise. And this is one of the reasons I love Apple so much. They are constantly fighting to keep their users' data private, regardless of what situation they're in. Whether they have been accused of a crime and their phone has been taken by law enforcement, or whether or not it's been stolen from a criminal and sitting in a locker somewhere to be used later, they want to keep your data private. And so I don't have to be as worried about that specific type of niche attack, but one that I do have to be worried about is consistently phishing. And researchers have identified a new tool that's targeting GitHub developers. And basically this tool enables attackers to harvest email addresses from public GitHub profiles and send phishing emails en masse directly to user inboxes. The tool is causing concern as it could be a conduit for more severe threats like source code theft, supply chain attacks, supply chain attacks, and corporate breaches through compromised developer credentials. And researchers at Slash Next warned that these mass email campaigns are custom tailored to bypass spam filters, focusing particularly on developer communities. And this tool is available for purchase for as little as $150 for a custom build and $1,000 for the full source code as of early last month. A potential attack might see developers being led to fraudulent websites designed to capture credentials, deploy malware, or exploit OAuth apps for unauthorized access to private repositories. Interestingly, the artist selling this on the dark web is associated with a Telegram profile claiming membership in the GitLocker team, infamous for a previous GitHub extortion campaign. So as always, as you're navigating the internet as a developer, be careful about what you click on, especially from your inbox. And if you happen to be a developer that uses Mac, it's come to our attention that North Korean attackers have 
exploited Apple's macOS platform by developing trojanized applications, including notepad apps and Minesweeper games through the use of Google's Flutter framework, which means that these malicious apps were signed and notarized with a legitimate Apple developer ID, allowing them to initially circumvent Apple's security verifications and execute on macOS systems without restriction. Many of the apps we've seen so far carry cryptocurrency themed names, which aligns with North Korea's historical focus on financial theft. One particular app named New Updates in the Crypto Exchange revealed obfuscated code enabling Apple script execution, which facilitated their command and control server interaction. The application masqueraded as a Minesweeper game, leveraging open source code available on GitHub. Jamf identified additional variants such as Golang and Python-based applications like New Era for Stablecoins and Runner.app, which presented as benign notepad apps. And Apple is continually revoking these certifications of these malicious apps. But, you know, once something's out there, it's really hard to take it back. If you've installed one of these apps or something fishy, even from the Apple store, do a quick Google search and see if anything's come up. Or maybe stick to the, the popular developers of Minesweeper and other notepad style apps. And finally, cybersecurity authorities such as the FBI, NSA, and Five Eyes have identified the top 15 most exploited vulnerabilities from 2023. In this report, they highlight that there's been a critical shift towards zero-day vulnerabilities having been exploited more than in previous years. In fact, 12 out of these 15 vulnerabilities were zero-day exploits. Among the most exploited was a code injection vulnerability in Citrix's Netscaler ADC gateway, that was prominently abused by state-sponsored attackers having compromised multiple US critical infrastructure organizations. Additionally, I'm seeing vendors like Cisco, Fortinet, Atlassian, of course there's Apache with Log4j2, and the types of vulnerabilities are the, you know, the OWASP top 10, but we've got code injection, buffer overflows, privilege escalations, command injections into web UIs, SQL injections, a lot of memory ones like the heat-based buffer overflow as well, which is a little bit surprising to me. But all of these products like the Netscaler Gateway, Fortinet, Moveit, Log4j, you've got Outlook, Confluence. These are all very prevalent products. And, you know, if j just goes to show that you can be dazzled by these products that will take care of a lot of your tasks throughout the day and help you stay organized and productive. And you think that since they're built by these giant companies like Microsoft and Cisco and Atlassian, that they're gonna be safe, but you have to also prioritize your security when you're implementing these new technologies. Make sure you are allocating the budget for someone to go stay up to date on these vulnerabilities and patch them because the cost of that full-time IT employee is much less than if you get hit by ransomware, I promise you that. So that's all for the news today, but before we let you go, check out our channel on YouTube. We're nearing the thousand subscriber mark. So if you haven't yet, please head over there and subscribe to our channel. It will really help people discover this podcast and get their cybersecurity news in a short form, straight into the point, personable way. So thank you so much. We couldn't do this without you. This has been The Daily Decrypt. If you found your key to unlocking the digital domain, show your support with a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It truly helps us stand at the frontier of cyber news. Don't forget to connect on Instagram or catch our episodes on YouTube. Until next time, keep your data safe and your curiosity alive.